episode 112, The Future of PR and 2023 Trends. Welcome to the PR Playbook Podcast, the only podcast giving you actionable skills and advice you need to execute a strategic PR program. Warning, what you hear next may lead to brand awareness and increased sales and customer exposure. Now here's your host, Rinjini Joshua. Hi, and welcome to 112, the future of PR 2023 trends. This is Ranjini Joshua. It is the end of the year. We are wrapping up and getting ready. And today I have Megan Alba, our account director at the Silver Telegram, joining us. Hey, Megan. Hi, nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining me. I know we just wrapped the PR Essential Summit, so we've been doing a lot of talking lately. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, you know, every year, um, I just think it can't get any better. And then every year it does. And every year I learn something new. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to do this particular podcast was because we learned so much from the PR Essential Summit. And it's like, you don't know what to expect going into it, right? Like, it's, it's like kind of like, exactly. you're like, wow, this is amazing. And it turned out so good. So I was, you know, very excited that we're going to have the... PR Essentials Summit episodes. We're going to have those up on the PR Playbook starting in January. And then if you guys want to listen to it now, if you just can't wait one more moment, which it's possible because they some really good content, um, you can go to our website, www.thesilvertelegram.com and then look for the PR Essentials Summit in the menu and you can actually get the recordings on demand now. So you can hear lots of panels with myself, of course. We have Megan on there. We have Jasmine from our team, Grady from our team. Um, we've got some amazing speakers from outside of the agency, other PR agencies. We've got media. We've got Dean Takahashi from Games Beat Venture Bee. We have Rob Pegararo, John Biggs. Like we just had a really like wealthy, knowledgeable, wealthy people. Uh, well, what is what am I trying to say? I'm saying like, <laughs> you know, like wealth uh, of resources. Yeah. Yeah. Just wealth like of resources wealth and resources and wealth and knowledge. So yeah, we just had some great gems dropped. So anything from marketing in the metaverse to saying visible in a recession, we had a, a series of workshops. So anyways, Essential Summit guys, check it out, but they will drop in January. But today I really want to talk about some of the key takeaways. And first I wanted to kind of touch on the transition of PR in 2023, what, what it's looking like and how we're kind of going into a more integrated communications approach. I mean, Megan, what do you think? What do you think the biggest changes in PR are for 2023? Well, I think one of the buzzwords definitely for this year has been metaverse. Um, and of course, we've been we've been seeing it and hearing that word for for quite a while for the last couple of years. And there were a lot of questions this year about what the metaverse is. Is it here to stay? You know, is it just a trend? And just in talking to different journalists, we, we found out that it really is here to stay, but it's still being defined. And so understanding mm -hmm. what it is and how it applies to your target audience is really important because that's what's going to keep you relevant in your marketing and your communication strategy. Yeah. And in the last podcast, we kind of talked about staying visible in the market during a recession and like not so much like cutting back on your communications program because you, we all know like that's the first thing to go right like <laughs> when i remember i, I want to say like i don't know 2000 i don't know a long time ago when you know the bubble the dot com bust kind of happened that's mm -hmm. like kind of the first thing it's like oh let's cut our marketing let's cut our marketing dollars let's cut our pr dollars let's stop communicating with the audience and now it's like because everyone is digital you have to actually find new ways to communicate with the audience and keep your content like going. Exactly. It's all about learning how to adapt to what the needs and the communication styles are for, for today. And they are changing rapidly, but at the end of the day, being authentic and building those relationships is still important, however they're coming through. So yeah. I think that's why it comes back to like metaverse is not just a fad. It's just a new way of communicating and it puts ultimately more power into your hands, but also more responsibility to be creative and be authentic. 
And that actually leads to one of the other key points I wanted to mention for 2023 or trends is that content. I mean, what we heard throughout the summit was that content is still king and, and it always has been king and it will remain king. Like if you're not putting out content and I had this like awesome conversation with April white and we were just saying like, if you're not putting out content and your competitors aren't putting out content, who's putting out content? (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Who's, who's keeping like, who is becoming the leader in their particular category or segment? So I think it's really important to have like a really good content strategy for 2023 and remembering that having content, whether it's written, video, audio, whatever format is going to be really important. And I think something that surprised me the most was from the SEO session, Mm -hmm. learning that long form content is still very valuable. Yeah. Um, So don't neglect it. It's easy to say, oh, we'll make a video. Oh, I'll make a, you know, 500 word blog post. But long form content is still necessary. People are still looking for it or still digesting it. And most importantly, it's like a key um, feature for good SEO and for Google rankings. What was the, what was the number on that work? It was like 2,500 words. 2,500 I mean, words. It was yes. insane. I, I was like, two, yeah. who has time to write 2,500 words? <laughs> I mean, I was shocked. It's, and, you know, I can remember the days of writing that long form content and I yeah. thought it was long gone. So I was, I was kind of relieved <laughs> to find yeah. out it's still around. But the caveat, of course, is that it needs to be good quality content. Don't write 2,500 words of fluff. Well, and that's the other thing, too. You write 2,500 words. There are so many things you can do with that one piece. So um, we talked about thematic campaigns before. You can use that 2,500 word content as your, like, anchor. And then you can chop it up into, like, you know, 15 different things. So I think there's a benefit in that as well. Yes. Another thing, just like PR trends in general, one of the things was like moving towards an integrated communication approach and that PR alone is never, never, it was never going to help you by itself. And I, I don't think I would have ever said that. I think what people fail to understand is how closely knit PR is with sales, social media, mm-hmm. marketing, you know, all this, all these different, even co- like content marketing has become so much of our job nowadays, right? Yes. So, yeah. I, we've seen a big increase in that over the last year for sure. Yeah. And I think I was mentioning in another podcast that just like how much content we've created over the last year, it's not just press releases, but it's contributed bylines, it's blogs, it's um, people need help with like so many different forms of content. So when you are looking at PR for 2023, don't look at PR as just media relations. Look at it as your really your communication strategy, not a PR strategy. And it's it kind of hurts me a little bit. It breaks my heart to say that, but <laughs> but I think we have to start evolving with the times, and that's where PR is going into this integrated communications approach. I agree, and I think the word integrated is key because. The important point here is that everyone has a seat at the table. I think for so long it was broken up into sales and marketing and PR, and we're all doing our own jobs. But if we're not talking to each other and if those teams are not working together, then your communication strategy is going to be a mess. Your messaging is going to be a mess. So what's important is everybody has a seat at the table. Everybody's communicating. Everyone's working together towards the goal. I know. And we try to tell clients that (laughs) I think, I feel like we try to tell them like, (laughs) we need to talk to your sales team, or we need to talk to this other part of the team to get their perspective on, you know, how are customers reacting? Because usually I find that the best pitches that I've come up with, as far as like pitching the media have been from, uh, things that the sales team have said, Mm -hmm. you know, like they, they tell you like, Oh, this is what people are responding to. This is what customers are responding to. And then you go back and use that as a pitch angle towards the media and the media is like, oh yeah, these these are the current challenges in the market. So they're very relevant, even though sales, specifically even just sales and PR do not talk to each other very much. I think keeping that like a monthly regroup or something, I don't know, you know, some way where you're connecting, right? Absolutely. Sometimes just knowing the problems and the challenges and the solutions can make a huge difference in how you're interacting with the media. And the customers know, the customers know what they need and what they want. And so that's the closest interaction we get with the customers is through the sales team. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I think has been a 
overarching theme is social equity and diversity diversity when it comes to people like human capital and and this is just a general right this is not like really targeted towards pr but i think it's just important to keep in mind that a lot of people are going to be focusing on their esg initiatives and social equity initiatives and in technology especially we're seeing a growth in minority voices leaders just like CEOs, uh, like just a shift in the chain of command and trying to kind of level the playing field in a way that's a little bit more aggressive than it has been in the past. Yes, absolutely. And I I love it. I mean, yeah, as a woman, I love the equity that's coming. I love that boardrooms are seeing, diff, you know, different genders, more faces of color. I love all of that. I think it's also important to remember that as that happens, Sometimes the standout of, you know, being, what am I trying to say? For example, earlier this year, we tried to do some uh, topics around like, oh, I'm a woman in tech. And yeah. that's not quite the standout anymore. It's not right. about just being a woman in tech. You have a seat at the table now. The question is, what are you doing with it? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, you can't just be, you can't just have a diverse team. Like <laughs> how effective yeah. are they? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I, so, and I think that's yeah, actually going to be around that. Yeah, I think that's going to be important because that is going to show the strength of what it what it is. I, I feel like if you bring a person to the table and it's like a week, it's just like something to fill the gaps. Then you know it's going to make our case as like you know a minority, obviously. So it's going to make our case a little bit weaker. Of like, okay, why to their diversity? And it, the truth is. Diversity, you know, we've been working with companies all over the world. And I think understanding different cultures and understanding different nuances of, you know, we've been working with companies in like Denmark and Croatia and like yes. Italy and India. And so it's it's very important to be able to communicate to those different audiences, but also like understand the cultural differences and, and all their vacations as well. <laughs> have, have you heard the word glocal? Have you heard yes. it cropping up more? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> you know, it's so funny because like, I can't remember when, but I want to say like early 2000s, there was one of my clients had used that word. And I just thought it was so funny at that time. And the fact that it's popping up again is really interesting. Yes. I heard it probably about 10 years ago and then it went away. And I just thought, oh, what a funny word. Yeah. And now, especially after the pandemic, I just think it's it's more meaningful and I love to see it coming back because yeah. I love what it means now. Absolutely. So the next thing I want to talk about just, um, and I'm hopping around, but you know, these segments, uh, they vary in length. So we'll see, we'll see how far we get. <laughs> but I wanted to talk about some of the media trends. A lot of what I heard was about AI and automation and how that will continue to mature and not not take over jobs like iRobot, like everyone thought, but really become a tool. I'm hearing a lot about generative AI and um, mm -hmm. all these different types of automation. And, and of course, I think health tech is also going to be big in 2023. Yes. But what do you think? I mean, what like I think AI as a tool is becoming a little bit more prevalent than AI as a substitution. And I think that's what the conversation is going towards. Yes. And I love that because I think for so long it was, oh, this can replace a person. And we, we've stopped talking about whether or not AI can replace people. Like, like what yeah. you said a few minutes ago, it's more about how AI can help you to better manage your time and your resources and to do deeper and more meaningful work. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's almost like it's taken us this long to understand exactly what we were supposed to be doing with AI. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. And like, we've, we've kind of finally gotten the grasp that it's, it's not about like totally replacing something. It's about, you know, working together. So I, I think, love I where it's going. I think that's like the maturation of that technology. Like, right. We, we yeah. all were like, okay, AI can do all these things, but like, how is it going to fit into our life? And it took us that long to figure that out. <laughs> Yeah. And do we want it to do all those things? What right. do we want it to do? So I really loved the discussion with, with Grady about SEO and talking about some of the generative AI tools that can help you save time on like metadata, meta tags, mm -hmm. things like that. Just those little details that sometimes you forget about or helping with research. It's not actually writing the article. It's just helping you do, everybody knows the hardest part of writing is just getting started. 
Yeah. And so it's like giving you that little bump, that little boost, <laughs> you know, to get started, to work on those little details. So I, I loved that. And then I loved the portion of the conversation with EBP man and with Dean and talking about the way that generative, that they're using generative AI, but also just kind of the way that AI is blending into the background and technology. And sometimes you don't even realize that you're using it and you don't even realize that it's, it's helping you, uh, yeah. but it's there and it's just kind of quietly doing its job. Well, right now, Google is making a transcript of this podcast. So yes, <laughs> there we go. There <laughs> it's a perfect go. example. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing, like, I guess just kind of like wrap this up a little bit is, you know, just what I found is that it's really interesting because I feel like back in the day, they always say like, pick a niche focus. And then mm -hmm. over the last five years, it was cast a wide net and talk to everybody. And now we're going back to this approach of becoming more targeted and like intentional about communications. And so obviously I want to wrap this up with a communication spin on it, but like, I think it's really important that now we are kind of speaking in a voice, number one, that's true to us. And I don't, I want to stop using the word authentic, but I, there's no other word for it. So a voice that's true to us as a brand or as a people, but then also speaking to the audiences more directly. Like, do, do you find, like, I feel like anything that we've been writing and like our cus our clients, we really had to take a little bit more of a targeted approach on exactly what we're talking about and like what we want out of those conversations. Yes. And I think it goes back to, to a few key points. One is building relationships because people can see through the fluff. Yeah. Um, at this point. And that also goes into creating content, creating meaningful content. We've spent, I would say a decade or more being consumers, you know, yeah. there's like, because there's just so much information on the internet now and people are getting to the point where they realize that they can contribute, but there's a lot of noise out there. So how do you contribute? How do you target your information to seek out the exact people that you want? Because we are in a global society and you can reach anyone you want, but you don't want to reach everyone. We don't, yeah. nobody wants to reach eight, 8 billion people. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Exactly. It's, it's not possible. But who, like, who are the exact people that you're reaching who are your community? And the great news is they don't just have to be in your physical neighborhood anymore. They can be anywhere in the world. But right. it's about the type of content and the targeting that is going to help you find them and help them find you. Absolutely. That's, that, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you wrap this conversation up. Uh, <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think this is a great conversation to have for next year. And I think it's a good, just things to remember as you're building your strategy, your communications approach. I mean, yeah, the world is shifting a lot, but I, I think it's important to make sure that my, my keyword for, I usually pick like a theme for every year. And I think for 2023, we're going to talk about optimizing or amplifying what you already have that, that those are going to be my go-to's. Yeah. Yeah. My go-to's for 2023 is amplifying your content, whether it's your voice or your written content or your video, con whatever it is. So I'm hoping everyone has an awesome 2023. Megan, thank you so much for wrapping up the year with me. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. Yeah. And guys, the PR Essential Summit sessions will be out soon. Stay tuned or check them out on the website and see you next year.